Hi everyone, welcome to Fullstack Mania. So in this video, we are going to learn about Spring Cloud Stream. So Spring Cloud Stream is a framework that is used to bind the code to the destination. Bind the code means bind the application that you are going to build. It is used to build highly scalable event-driven microservices. And your application can act as a producer, consumer or a processor. And we need very minimal configuration to build these microservices and with Spring Cloud Stream, it is really easy to switch between the message brokers because it provides an abstraction layer over the real message broker. So let's start implementing this practically. Let's create a Spring Boot application. Go to File, New, Spring Starter Project and here I'll change the name to Spring Cloud Stream and rest all I'll keep add as it is and click on Next. Here I am going to add the dependencies, cloud stream dependency and now I am going to use the spring Kafka dependency. So the first one, don't use the second one. This is Apache Kafka stream which is different and click on next and now click on finish so that the project will be created for you. The project is created. Let's open the form.xml and see the dependencies we have. So we have the spring cloud stream dependency. We have Spring Cloud Kafka Binder Dependency and Spring Kafka Dependency and we have the Spring Boot Starter Test Dependency as well. So let's open the source main resources and open the main method available in our project. Let's write a Java function as a bean. So add the rate bean and let's add the method. The access modifier is public. So it is public and the function is the return type. So function will come from java.util, input type is string and the return type is also string and the name of the function is to upper case. Okay. And let's return whatever value we'll get to upper case. So value lambda function value dot to upper case. So it's a simple Java it function that will take string as the input and convert it into upper case. Now let's run the application. Right click run as Java application and this is when we can see the Spring Boot auto configuration in action. As we have the Kafka binder dependency in the pom.xml, Spring Boot will try to connect to localhost 9092 because the default port for Kafka is 9092. But in our case the Kafka is not running that's why it is saying broker may not be available and could not establish the connection. So let's stop the application and start the Kafka server. To start the Kafka server, we have to start the Zookeeper server which manages the Kafka server. So this is the command. If you are on Windows, then you have to run Zookeeper server start dot bat file. And if you are on Mac or Linux, then you have to run the dot sh file. Okay. And if you hit this command and within a couple of minutes, the Zookeeper server will be up and running. And now if you see this binding port to 2181, that means your Zookeeper is up and running. Now let's start the Kafka server. This is the command to start the Kafka server. Hit enter and give it some time so that it will be up and running. So the default port for the Kafka is 9092. So wherever you see a log, which is telling that connection is established to 9092 means your Kafka server will be up and running. Okay. So now the Kafka server is up and running and let's go to the other tab and see the number of topics in the Kafka server. So this is the command to see the list of topics we have hit enter. And now we can see that we don't have any topic in our Kafka server, right? So let's go to Eclipse and start our Spring Boot application. Run as Java application. Let's give it some time and let's see whether the Spring Boot application will be able to make some difference or not. So our Spring Boot application is about to start and now we can see few important logs in our Spring Boot application. One of them is the partition assigned to uppercase hyphen in hyphen zero. We'll see what it is later on. Let's go to the terminal and see the number of topics again. And 
Now we can see that we have two new topics in our Kafka server. Two uppercase hyphen in hyphen zero, two uppercase hyphen out hyphen zero. So how it is creating these topics? If you see this name two uppercase, this is the same name we gave to the method here two uppercase. Okay. So the Spring Boot auto configuration assumes the name of the topic as the name of the method. The reason it created the in and out topic is we declared the return type of the method as function. So Spring Cloud Stream is able to leverage the Java 8 functional programming feature. It is able to understand that a function is a functional interface that takes something as the input and returns something as the output. So to take something as the input, it created two uppercase hyphen in topic and to return something as the output, it created two uppercase hyphen out topic. So Spring Cloud Stream is smart enough to determine the application type based on the method return type. If we are returning a function, that means our application is a processor. So it will create both the input and output channel. So the structure is method name hyphen in for the input channel and method name hyphen out for the output channel. Okay. If the return type is consumer, we know consumer is a functional interface that takes something as the input and returns nothing. That means our application is a consumer. So it will create only the input channel. And if the return type is supplier, we know that supply is a supplier is a functional interface that takes nothing as the input but returns something. So that means our application will be the publisher or the producer. So it will only create the output channel. So as of now we have created the processor and we have the input message channel and the output message channel. So we have to create the producer and consumer. Instead of creating the producer and consumer as the Java application, let's use the Kafka console producer and Kafka console consumer to get the result faster. Let's open the terminal and create the producer. So this is the command. We have to write Kafka console producer hyphen hyphen bootstrap server and bootstrap server value is where the Kafka is listening to and we have to give the topic to which we want to produce data that is to uppercase in hyphen zero and hit enter okay and let's create the consumer so the command is here i'll write this command kafka console consumer hyphen hyphen bootstrap server is the same we have we are connecting to 9092 and from which topic we want to get the data that is to uppercase hyphen out hyphen zero okay hit enter and now let's produce some data on the left hand side. Let's write hello. Let's and we can see it is getting converted to uppercase. Now let's write something else. Let's write higher and let's write hurry and let's write something. Let's say she. And now we can see whatever data we are producing on the producer side, everything is getting converted to uppercase. Okay. So here our application is acting as a processor which is taking input data from an input message channel that is two uppercase in hyphen zero converting into uppercase and publishing it to the two uppercase out channel. Now let's create the producer and consumer and create the full fledged application. I'll copy this and I'll create the producer. I'll change the name of the method to data. Okay. And this method will do nothing. Whatever data it will get, it will just return that data. Okay. So this is our producer. Now let's create a consumer. Okay. Which will take the data from the two uppercase processor and it will just consume it. So to create a consumer, let's let let's give the return type as consumer of string. Okay. And now let's add a logger. So let's go to the top of the application and add a logger. And let's change the method name as consumer and log the value. So the value is, let's just 
log it something okay value is and add the value okay so it's a very basic producer consumer application and let's write down the topics that will be created by spring boot auto configuration as the return type is a function it will create both the input and output channel so to upper case hyphen in hyphen zero and to upper case hyphen out hyphen zero so these are the channels that will be created by spring boot auto configuration similarly for this one data hyphen in hyphen zero and data hyphen out hyphen zero and for the consumer as it is a consumer so it is going to subscribe to some of the input channels so it is going to create only an input channel for it so it will create the consumer hyphen in hyphen zero channel for the consumer okay now we have listed down all the message channels that will be created by spring boot auto configuration but the channels are not sync with each other like the data hyphen out hyphen zero channel should be an input channel for the two uppercase processor because it will take data from there and the two uppercase hyphen out hyphen zero channel should be an input channel for the consumer right so let's write some configuration and make these channels sync with each other let's convert the application dot properties to application dot yaml refactor rename and change the dot properties to dot yaml and hit enter okay and let's write a property spring dot cloud dot function dot definition okay so to this property we have to add all the method names we have with a semicolon in between so we have the two uppercase method copy this and paste it over here semicolon then we have the data method copy this paste it over here and semicolon and we have the consumer as a method okay so we'll put it there let's write the stream bindings and it is a good practice to write the stream binding serially first the producer then processor and then the consumer okay so stream dot bindings and here we'll give all the bindings okay so for first let's write for the producer so for the producer we have the data hyphen in hyphen zero as the input channel so we'll give it here data hyphen in hyphen zero and let's write the destination for it so the destination is let's say we'll give data hyphen in okay now for the data hyphen out hyphen zero we have the output channel right so for the data hyphen out hyphen zero let's add the destination property and let's give a destination let's say the destination is data hyphen out similarly for the processor we have the uh, two uppercase hyphen in hyphen zero channel okay so let's go to the properties file and for the two uppercase hyphen in hyphen zero let's add the destination as data hyphen out because whatever the producer will produce in data hyphen out that will be as an input to our processor right so it should be the same okay and for the two uppercase hyphen out hyphen channel that is the output channel of the processor right let's copy this and go to the properties file and for this let's write a destination as uh, data hyphen out or let's say let's write uppercase data uppercase hyphen out similarly for the consumer we have the consumer hyphen in hyphen zero channel right so let's copy this and go to the properties file and for this channel let's add the destination as uppercase out because whatever our processor will produce that will be an input for our consumer right so in this way we sync all the messaging channels that will be created by spring boot auto configuration let's go to the main method and start the spring boot application okay and uh, before starting it i think we have a typo over here so let's fix this and stop the application and restart the spring boot application go to the main method run as java application okay 
Now let's give the Spring Boot application couple of minutes to spin up. And once the Spring Boot application is up and running, let's see whether it will be able to make some difference or not. Now the Spring Boot application is up and running. Let's go to the terminal and let's try to produce some data to the data-in message channel because the data hyphen is the same name that we gave in the configuration over here as the destination okay so from the kafka producer let's try to produce some data to this message channel hit enter and let's write something let's say let's write hurry and let's go to the ide and see the logs here we are getting hurry as in uppercase okay let's go back to the terminal and write few more words let's say let's write foo let's write bar let's write ss pp something like that and let's go to the ide and we can see that everything is getting converted to uppercase and this log is getting printed because we wrote a logger in the consumer of our application if you remember okay so in this way we created a producer consumer application with spring cloud stream now in spring cloud stream we don't have to worry about the underlying messaging broker like we have the destination as data in so if we are using kafka then data in will be a topic in kafka server if we are using rabbitmq then data in will be an exchange in rabbitmq server okay so let's switch back to rabbitmq broker and you will see how easy it is to switch to a another messaging broker with spring cloud stream so the only change we have to do is to go to the pom.xml and change the binder so for rabbitmq we have a binder called rabbit and let's save this and it will import all the dep dependencies that are required okay once the import is done we are done with our coding part now instead of spinning up rabbitmq in our local let's run it as a docker container open the terminal and type docker hyphen hyphen version and if you see a version that means docker is installed in your machine let's run the rabbitmq docker container with this command here 15672 is the port where rabbitmq provides the admin console and 5672 is the port where it runs the rabbitmq server if you still have any doubts then you can check out the card on the top right corner of your screen where i explained what docker is okay and let's give couple of minutes time for this docker container to be up and running and within some time the rabbitmq server will be up and running okay now let's go to our chrome and send request to localhost 8081 and it will open up the rabbitmq admin console the default username password is guest and guest so with this username password that's login okay and let's close this we don't need all these pop-ups and let's go to the exchanges and here we can see we don't have the data in data out all those messaging channels that we need now let's go to the ide and start our spring boot application let's give the spring boot ap application some time to spin up here as we have rabbitmq binder the spring boot auto configuration will come into picture and the spring boot auto configuration will by default try to connect to localhost 5672 which is the default port for rabbitmq okay now our spring boot application is up and running let's go to the rabbitmq console and now we can see the data in data out uppercase out all those messaging channels that we need okay let's go inside the data in channel and let's publish a message so here click on the publish message and let's type something let's say hurry and publish message message is published let's go to the id and now we can see that we can see the name in uppercase okay let's try it once again let's write something uh gita or something else let's type gita and publish it and now we can see this is in uppercase okay so with this we are done with our example i have checked in the code in github and the source code link is in description if you like this video then please like share and subscribe thank you